Do you prefer Coke or Sprite? Or are you part of the Niche Mountain Dew fan club? No matter what soft drink you like, there's no denying that these drinks have become staples with every meal. Most of us are used to cracking open a can with our cheeseburgers or pizzas. Have you ever wondered how our favorite beverages are made? In this video, we'll talk about how a factory produces these canned soft drinks. First up, here's some background. Soft drinks are some of the most popular beverages in the world. Around 200 nations enjoy the sugary sparkling soda, with an annual consumption of more than 34 billion gallons. Sounds insane, right? So where did this obsession with soft drinks begin. It all began thousands of years ago. Ancient Greeks and Romans recognized the value of mineral water and bathed in it for relaxation. In the late 1700s, people in Europe and America began drinking sparkling mineral water for its therapeutic benefits. Soda water started becoming mass-produced in the early 1800s. Before long, people were drinking the beverage not only for its supposed health benefits, but also for its refreshing taste. The market for soft drinks expanded as they began to be sold in glass bottles. New flavors appeared on the market, including lemon and root beer. Of course, in 18 1986, a pharmacist from Atlanta changed the game forever when he combined soda water, coca leaves, and cola nuts, inventing the most popular soft drink of all, Coca-Cola. Many further advancements have been made in the soda industry over the years. The name soft drink came about as an alternative to hard liquor. The packaging also evolved with the invention of lightweight plastic bottles and, of course, aluminum beverage cans. Up next, these are the raw materials used in making soft drinks. So what exactly are the ingredients used in soft drinks? What gives them their distinct flavor and fizz? Well, it starts as most things do with water. It might shock you, but around 94% of soft drink is just carbonated water. Carbon dioxide adds that bite and fizz to a beverage and acts as a mild preservative. The second main ingredient is obviously sugar, which makes up around 7-12% to of a soft drink. Used in either liquid or dry form, sugar adds sweetness and body to the beverage, enhancing the mouthfeel, an essential part of us enjoying soft drinks. It also helps to balance flavors and acids. The taste of each different brand of soft drink depends on a balance between sweetness, tartness, and acidity. You'll notice that drinks like Sprite have more of a sour kick to them than Coke. Acid makes the background taste of a drink sharper and helps to enhance the thirst-quenching feeling by stimulating saliva flow. The most common acid added to sodas is citric acid, which has a lemony flavor. Acid also acts as a preservative. These ingredients form the basis of any soft drink. Minimal quantities of other ingredients may be added to increase taste, aroma, mouthfeel, or appearance. Of course, each brand adds distinct flavoring to their drinks, which may be natural, natural identical, or artificial. Now, the manufacturing process begins, starting with clarifying the water. Most soft drinks are produced at local bottling and canning companies. Franchise companies grant license to bottlers to mix the soda strictly according to their secret formulas and required manufacturing processes. The first step of producing soft drinks is generally to clarify the water. The quality and purity of water is absolutely essential to creating a good soft drink. Impurities such as bacteria, organic matter, and suspended particles may degrade the color and taste. It is very important for companies such as Coke to have a uniform drink in every can and bottle around the world. So this first step is crucial. Impurities in the water are generally removed through the traditional process, a series of coagulation, filtration, and chlorination. Yes, guys, soda involves a lot of science. It's more than sugar and fizzy water. Coagulation is generally known as a process of a liquid changing to a solid or semi-solid state. In the context of water clarification, it involves mixing a gelatinous precipitate, or flock, ferric sulfate, or aluminum sulfate into the water. The flock serves to absorb suspended particles, making them larger and easier to filter out. During the clarification process, it is also important to adjust the alkalinity of water by adding lime to reach the desired pH level. Moving on, the water is filtered and sterilized. Just clarifying the water isn't enough. It has to be crystal clear, you know, before you add tons of sugar and chemicals to it. The next step is filtration. Sandpaper is used to remove the fine particles of flock from the water. The water passes through a layer of sand and coarser beds of gravel to capture the particles. Is anyone else getting 8th grade science lab flashbacks? Next, the filtered water is sterilized to make sure there are no bacteria or organic compounds in the water that might ruin the taste and color. The water is then pumped into a storage tank, and a small amount of free chlorine is added. The chlorinated water remains in the storage tank for around 120 minutes until the reaction is complete. Finally, an activated carbon filter removes the chlorine and any leftover impurities from the water. A vacuum pump de-aerates the water before it passes into a dosing station. Up next, all the ingredients are mixed. Now, we get to the fun part, the mixing of the ingredients. Unfortunately, although we'd love for this step to be a huge cauldron of bubbling coke, it also involves quite some science. Dissolves sugar and flavor flavor concentrates are pumped into the dosing station, in a specific order depending on their compatibility. The ingredients are passed into batch tanks where they are mixed carefully. Too much agitation can cause unwanted exposure to too much air. The sugary syrup may be sterilized while in the tanks, using ultraviolet radiation or flash pasteurization, which is a process of quickly heating or cooling the mixtures. Fruit-based syrups generally have to be pasteurized, so rest assured that the soft drink in your hand is free from bacteria, even if it's giving you diabetes. Next, the water and syrup are carefully 
perfectly mixed together, using sophisticated machines called proportioners, which regulate flow rates and ratios of the liquids. Remember, when it comes to soda, balance is everything. The vessels are pressurized by carbon dioxide to prevent aeration. Now, the beverage is carbonated. At this stage, we add the fizz, the sparkle, if you will. Carbonation is typically added to the finished mixture, though it may also be mixed into the water at an earlier stage. It's essential to regulate the water at this stage because carbon dioxide solubility increases as the liquid temperature decreases. Some carbonators come with their own cooling systems. The amount of carbon dioxide depends on what type of soft drink is being manufactured. For example, fruit drinks require much less carbonation than mixer drinks like tonics, which are meant to be diluted with other liquids. The soda tends to be slightly overpressured with carbon dioxide to facilitate movement into storage tanks and ultimately into the filler machine. Next up, filling and packaging. The journey from the storage tank to cans is an intense one. The finished product is transferred to cans at very high flow rates. The containers are then immediately sealed with pressure-resistant closures, typically tin plate or steel crowns with pull tabs. Next, because the soft drinks are generally cooled in the manufacturing process, they are brought to room temperature to be labeled. This is done so that the condensation doesn't ruin the labels. It's done by spraying containers with warm water and then drying them before affixing labels. Most labels are made of paper, while some are made of plastic film. This process is only for bottles, though. Tin cans are usually pre-printed with a label before the filling stage. Finally, the containers are packed into trays or cartons. These are then shipped in large pallets or crates to distributors. Finally, quality control. As we discussed before, soft drink manufacturers have to stick to strict water quality standards for allowable alkalinity, dissolved solids, iron, chlorides, and aluminum. This is not only in the interest of public health, but also to facilitate consistency of color, flavor, and body, which requires pure water. So at soft drink factories, it's common practice to carry out microbial and other testing. The National Soft Drink Association and other agencies have also set the criteria for regulating the quality of sugar and other ingredients. Low quality sugar also tends to spoil soft drinks, so it must be handled carefully in clean and dry environments. It's incredibly important for soft drink manufacturers to inspect all raw materials before they are mixed with other ingredients, because preservatives may not kill all bacteria. Machinery and storage tanks must also be regularly sterilized. Finally, cans made of aluminum alloy or tin-coated low-carbon steel are lacquered internally to seal the metal and prevent corrosion from contact with the beverage. And that's how regular water turns into your favorite soda. That's a wrap for this video. Do you find the manufacturing process of soft drinks interesting? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one!